Hey, what is up, guys? We are back here for another episode of the TCG Party Podcast. We hope you guys enjoy missing us a lot. We had a lot of fun last week. Uh, here again is my boy Giovanni here. What is up, Kevin? It's great to have you back for another crime scene episode that we are causing all over. Like the Young Bucks, we are making the business or breaking the business or whatever you want. Anyway, we got a lot on our hands. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get Noel to come to this episode uh, because, unfortunately, that beloved, beloved, oh so cuck lord of ours, unfortunately, had to get his wisdom tooth removed yesterday, sending us a video of him and Anastasia, letting us know he had his uh, wisdom tooth removed, his mouth all bloody well, and everything, course. and he still feels sore for his mouth. So we won't see him today's episode but we promise we hope that maybe he might come next week i didn't say he will come i said he might if he's on the moon until then noel we hope you recuperate well in the meantime uh giovanna we have a lot to talk about so first thing here we're going to be talking about in the podcast is the brand new set tbs release reprints that are here so what's on our mind with those cards today which cards again kevin the reprints oh yes you know it's a glorious day when you get dormant potential unleash cooler tyrannical assault and what was the last reprint you know it's so good i can't even remember it but the android 16 get... reprint the blue and green yeah that is the one Hey, you know, it's shocking, you know, in their winter promos, but hey, they give us Dormant Potential Unleashed, something the budget players need desperately if you're trying to play green. It's it's a nice surprise. And among, yeah, and the cards, you know, <laughs> keep interrupting here, sorry. Uh, no, among all the other cards that they show us, I'll let you finish. Nothing, I was going to say it looks fucking good. Oh, the go- oh, yeah, the the the, gr- the Gohan art on that is amazing. It, it reminded me of like Frieza Saga. Like I was like, ooh, could we get a Frieza Saga set? And then I remembered Clash of Fates was a Frieza Saga set. So basically, you're bad because oh. unlike a non Frieza Army player like myself, oh. you forgot the fact that Death Dormant Potential is 100% a Frieza Saga card because it had the picture of Lord Guru giving the power boost of Gohan and Krillin. And this one, they already have Gohan in his little Saiyan armor attacking uh, third form uh, Frieza right into the stomach and just doing a major punch despite the fact not taking effect because you know, third form Frieza didn't take much damage in that. But anyway, it is really good looking. It is incredible artwork. It's part of the event packs. Uh, we are going to get more. There was already a listing of the current event packs that a lot of people may not know. And of course, uh, Geo sending it to us in the TCG party, the information that we received. So we're, all, we're not only getting just these three, the Dormant, the Cooler, and the Android 16 Energy. Uh, we also have about other cards from the set as well. We we're getting the B- Black Bardock promo, uh, uh, fighting against fate. We're getting the uh, God Sealing Trunks from set ten. We're getting the Trunks Hero Prospect promo. We're getting Frieza's Healing Pod. I don't know why that's there, but you know it's there. Um, well, hand destruction is goes- pretty effective in the game, of course, and a lot of people didn't really see potential like I did at the time until. Uh, when when the set 10 set came out and someone revealed that you can use this card for the hand destruction freezer deck then it's always going to be very useful because you know, well if we do see the, the format kind of like you know for green freeze maybe a comeback again sometime in the future and if it still requires where the unison and no bs rulings or anything that bandai wants to do um, it would see potential to be used. If not, you could probably use it in a newer green decks in the future that could be resourceful with uh, summoning from the, from the drop area as well as draw power. So however you guys want to work it, we can uh, find the, the result with that card. Well, funny you mentioned Bandai rulings and they might be BS. You know, if you draw your last card in Dragon Ball Super, you lose. But did you know in Digimon, you don't lose, you get your turn. So. 
games. I love how they make two different games and have two different rulings for the game. So you mean to tell me, every card game minus Dragon Ball Super is to have a no rule of you get to draw the last card and you continue the game until if you draw the next card there's nothing there it's automatic lose but in dbs i get the last card i lose has anyone yes. ever had find that stupid oh uh, wait yes because what the fuck were they thinking i thought that was the stupidest ruling in the world you should never do that it makes and sense. then and then they make a new their new ip game uh not have that ruling which made it even weirder this kind of hurts a lot to the bs community because well you're giving digimon this chance but i think bandai should take that ruling off because that's the stupidest ruling ever because it's it's even worse if you're against like a genema deck which is a mill deck and genemic does get a lot more support and people don't have to see that as a top tier deck they get used to but it could still be effective because they still get more support and the problem with that is that you have to like, unless you're playing a crazy 60 card deck, something that Vegix, Vegix 2.0, 10 times better, or like the specific strong 60 card required deck that you might need. Lord and Savior Vegix. You, you really, you're pretty much in a, in a downward spiral because you're pretty much at yourself in a position where you can't even get your last card to save you, like your little special heart of the cards in DDS. You're not going to get that. You're pretty much effed. And that's only because Bandai had to make that ruling. And that does affect you, which sucks. I mean, they keep making Janemba cards. They made that Janemba skillless deck in set 12 I messed around with, which was pretty neat to see. So, like, yeah, they're always going to give that character support no matter what. And it's not just the, the character. It's also the same color, too. Blue Janemba is the most devastating deck you can find in the entire GBS universe. I mean, it, it didn't make sense to swap them off it's, it's to another color. Like, they try to make multicolor cards, but, you know, I think they did right by not switching. It was kind of better that they don't do multicolor because multicolor is just... Well, eh. they, they, said that they said they were going to bring it back for, like, set 14 or 15. We'll see. I think, that, I think they've learned. Yeah, but that but the problem with that is that if you make multicolored unisons, that's just gonna take a lot of good and bad feedback to the player base because good you get to make the decks go crazy, the car prices go up, but makes the value for the game to even go higher, which makes men die a lot more money. Bad I mean before before these reprints, the game was pretty expensive due to the collectors and due to I don't want to call it scalping we don't like people aren't doing what they do in Digimon buying product you selling it I, higher prices. I, I honestly wouldn't call it scalping and I wouldn't say people want to say DBS did the scalping before the Pokemon I'm gonna say no because what happens was that Target never had a lot of uh, uh, quantity of all the DBS cards they only have a limited stock and they only sold that and that was it the, to be honest with you it's the vendors fault for not supplying all the target stores or Walmart st or it, putting the Walmart stores to give it goods or even some a couple GameStop stores because you do find a couple structure decks or whatever you know like to basically add more to the game I well, guess I mean, I, I I guess, mean Ben has allowed GameStop to sell their product there now which I think that'll help you know, I think that's a better retailer than going to Walmart since other people know, hey, look, let's go to Walmart, let's raid all their thing. I mean, um, there's some that may not even know that the game stops carry these cards outside of Pokemon. I mean, what they should do, honestly, is because if they, since the Magic the Gathering is the only ones you're going to find in stock in all the card shops and nobody's even bothered buying it, you should start limiting the stock. Think about this, you limit the stock with Magic, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not going to sell much, but then again, if Magic makes a little secret boom period, or Scalper's like, wait a minute, Magic is being sold? Because it play, it goes to the player's mind game, and it just goes well, ahead and have people go buy out, so that they make more value, they're like, oh, we want more, so we have more in the back, and then we bring well, more to well, the back, well, and then sell it. I did see a video from Team APS, they were stating that Yu-Gi-Oh is getting scalped now. And I think I was saying that on last week's podcast that, that Yu-Gi-Oh! was a game I could see people gravitating towards because it's expensive. The product is there, but it, once it's not there, it's gone. And Ghost from the Past has these collectors rare, like that Dark Magician people were trying to find. And it's a perfect storm for people trying to make money. Yeah. 
But then again, Magic right now is just not going to do anything. But yeah, but if they could work this way and DBS was one of the biggest uh, card games just to be sold and make a profit, I think Target should have had that opportunity instead of having a limited stock. They should like focus a little bit of giving that uh, game a chance, have enough amount so they can sell it. And then because of the scalping thing, they're one of the games that gets, gets like with Digimon, you Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! That, and the uh, MLB, MLB and NFL uh card trading cards or collectibles or anything that's going to be oh, limited right. stock they should probably put that in the list because i did also see a couple dbs cards being part of the the little special racks that they had to sell to customers for the limited stocks of certain cards really because um, bandai put out an email stating that dragon ball super and digimon products were not affected by this whole scandal that target's going under well, when I went when I went to the one in Dayland, obviously that one had the time a few weeks back had the couple of the new of the set thirteen sets so that people couldn't get it because they knew they were getting limited stock. Because yeah, that'd be great to get at the time, but you know, then again, it's just like not really in my point of view. I just really wouldn't care, you know, to get at the time. Not because I was getting the Pokemon cards or anything. Um, but you know mostly i just wasn't i'm not interested in the game anymore because the game just doesn't seem to have what it used to do and i was getting kind of bored of like getting straight into it i don't mind still talking about it still today guys so you don't have to worry about it. i'll still talk about dbs updates and everything because this is for you guys and i do love card games uh it's just sometimes card games today just doesn't have the same venue as they were back in the day or when they started the hype sometimes gets deflated and all the amount of player bases you get around in major stores and tournaments it just doesn't seem the same anymore and then the purchases and the sellouts and everything and the prices going high it, it, it was just too much was kind of dead for a little bit like red brawley killed it and then digimon was stomping it into the ground at, at pro play but now it's starting to come back with you know me and david trying our best trying to get people to go back and, and to play because you know the game deserves a scene it deserves you know um people to play because it is a good game and you know and kevin says all these things because he'll try anything he's played dc i think you tried chrono clash you know you, you play a little bit of everything so like you know we play multiple card games here and it was kind of hard sometimes just talking about dbs even though i was playing it competitively you know i've gone to a couple events and things like that and um so, so did angel when he was playing now he just plays vanguard so it's like it's very interesting just to see where we're all at right now. Noel just play, fo focuses on Digimon, but he has a couple DBS decks. So it's very, very interesting. Well, that's, that's but that's the idea with does card games. Like when I met Stevie, he uh, play, he had a Vanguard deck at the time, but then he stopped playing, so he focused more on Yu-Gi-Oh. He then stopped playing Major Yu-Gi-Oh, quits, comes back, Major comes back in. He did play Go format, doesn't want to play Go format, but then he comes back and he plays standard format. And, you know, all the crazy stuff having him right now is, you know, he still plays the standard Yu-Gi-Oh! more. Not because he is, but he kind of made a mistake selling up, well, not selling up, like, losing his Go deck like in, like a, you know, like an idiot because he made a bet on it. And because he lost the game... He, Remember, kid, don't bet on things you don't want to lose. You play, the, you see, if you play Battle City rules, you end up losing in Battle City. So that's the biggest wager of all that money he spent on those gold decks that he that he created which are very rare to get because these are old school printing cards with original effects and cards that you can't even find all around the world anymore because they do go high in price and the printing systems aren't really uh, what they used to be anymore so these are very hard to find the value on those cards depending on their condition it does go high so it makes go formats very difficult uh, you can use them with like certain with the current cards you have, but then you have to also remember what the original rulings are. So you have to play this by head. It's uh, not a rod. Some of them got a rada. Some of them have to remove the ban list, and some of those cards you try to find are still difficult to obtain. So it's not necessarily easy to get. It's not just Yu-Gi-Oh. The same thing with the Pokemon cards, which are expensive. Magic cards are crazy. If you try to even find the original first set from when it came out back in 93 
uh, good luck to you. If you ever like a rich kid, probably getting that stuff just for collectible again, good luck to you. But it's not going to be easy. I mean, you want to get those sets now. Best to get them as soon as possible. Vanguard, a different story. They just get reaped. They just, I don't know much with the game. All I know, all I, know, all I know is they just have a lot of uh, reboots. So, how are I mean, I just, I just picked up a, uh, a trial deck for that game uh, when I was uh, in Miami Wednesday. So, I'm gonna, I've been practicing a little bit, and but now I have physical cards. We'll see how that game plays. I'll let you know what my uh, findings on that is. I mean, whatever that would so up to you. That that's up to you, man. So have love, have fun, good luck with it, and it's whatever. Um, you know, I also <laughs> think there's other card games that people kind of forgot. You know, um, so there was there's Force of Will. That game came about like around five, six years ago, and there was there was a Harry Potter TCG. There, there you go. There's the Star Wars. That was a lot of hype there, at the time. There was Warcraft. There was Warcraft, Transformers. Um, well, COVID killed that one. That, that was a shame. That, well, there you go. COVID kills another game. I'll tell you one thing that was one of my favorites. Duel Masters. That's always going to be one of my favorite card games I've ever played. I, I kind of wish it went back. It, 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 it come back. That is it. such a great game. A lot of people say Digimon takes its homage from that game. It was a comp. It, that game was a combination of both Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh. It was not even created in Japan. I later found out in one of the card stores it was created in America, just like the anime. That's why the anime looks like fucking trash. When and when you hear their awful dubbing, it's, it's fucking again yeah. America. So, but the idea of the game was to cut was to grasp the viewership to make a profit with the cards. And I got the, some of the cards from the from Walgreens. I bought the structure decks. I, I never bought a booster box in my life, so at the time I only focused on structure decks. Um, I could buy a couple packs, I mean that's a different story, and I would collect a lot of the cards from when they used to sell them at McDonald's when they were the hype. Like Duel Masters was one of the biggest thing. The series only had about 65 episodes, and after that series it was complete buzz. They re- I mean, I mean, don't talk to me about McDonald's, you know, chasing those Pokemon cards was this last time was pretty hard. I have a great story for all the viewers, you want to hear it. Sure, and then we'll go over the last. I found the uh, the last reprints of the cards from that. So we can go over that. All right. All right so, so, a lot of people remember it because this year was the 25th anniversary of the Pokemon series when the first video game came out. And since then, the Pokemon world has changed a lot ever since the first video game came and released. When it was originally the red and green in the Japanese version, and came later on in America a couple years later to the red and blue series. Everything changed around from the video games to the anime series, from the anime series to the card games, from the card games to the collectibles of the toys, t-shirts, posters, anything you can grasp because you are a huge hardcore Pokemon. And unlike the Yu-Gi-Oh series which had the big hype at the time, Pokemon still does the toys, Pokemon still does the shirts, Pokemon still does the posters, and Pokemon is still going on stronger despite all the changes and everything, you know, Pokemon was the big thing. But how, what does this have to do with my story? Well, let me get to it. Because I have to make sure you guys know why this is big. So a lot of people have to remember that the whole big scalping thing was taking effect with every Pokemon card. Well, this was getting really big. When I was hearing that apparently they were legit giving out Pokemon training cards as kids meals as part of their toy sets in McDonald's. A lot of new scalpers started buying out so many of the kids meals and they were getting all the packs you were getting all your little cheeseburgers chicken nuggets everything that you're basically obesing yourself just to get a pack of cards but you know one person that bought 300 happy meals just for the packs and that was what it's insane about it because i also later found out one person even ended up getting a box full of packs and selling that shit to ebay mcdonald's was not really going to be taking that you know, literally, so they decided... Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen that. I saw somebody sell the whole box to PBG. Exactly. That. So, basically, they already stated they're only selling a limited stock. So, I went to McDonald's one day, and I go out there and I said, did you have the Pokemon cards? Because sometimes there might be some stores that have limited uh, venues that, that gives out the, the, the packages or whatever. So, anyway, I asked the, the cashier. He goes to ask the manager. He asked the manager, he says, yes, we do sell the cards. He tells him, like, okay, so how many can I go up to? 
So you can only get up to like about 10 meat, uh, kids meals and ask them the ratio of how much it would cost would have been between 50 to $60. Now that's only up to 10. Now if you imagine that for about 300, that's 60 and $50 means nothing. You could pay about 500 to $600 or more. And that's costing all this for a bunch of packs. Where in, in the end, it's three cards in a pack. One of them's going to be a holographic of the 25th anniversary uh, um, logo on top of the cards from old school original artwork of the certain cards of the all the str all of the starters from gens one to eight and the Pikachu with its new design, which its head looks too round and I think it looks stupid in because I am not a fan of it. So it's all. But it'll be it'll be like a thousand dollars soon enough. Because. Give it time. Exactly. So basically, it's 25 of those cards in those packs. With it, you also get like about a couple fun games. You get like a stickers from like the starters. You get like a little crossword like a little puzzle. Thing. You get all yeah. that, all that stuff. I ended up buying three Happy Meals, but because of the pandemic, you're not allowed to eat in the table. So what do I? Where the hell did I go eat? No, I didn't have a car. I don't have any. I literally walked to, from my apartment to McDonald's, and the distance from my house from there is like a mile and a mile for that is like about 30 to 45 minutes of a walk so i yeah, went from like the old, olden days so, you're like trapped exactly so i went all the way there and my fat ass obviously orders three of the other happy i get that of course you gotta get three drinks i ordered like three fucking smites so i get like three smalls that's like I mean, did you get a bag so it made it easier, or do, or you were just like, nah, I'm just carrying all this. I literally, like... I carried all that shit. I have a backpack with me, so I carry stuff because I was gonna go to the GameStop to see if they have anything I wanted. I oh, okay. go to the back of the of the shopping area, which is near the dumpster, which is that's how sad it is. And I go there, and I had to eat all the food outside. And I had to eat this in a fucking rush. I would, I ate like two fucking cheeseburgers. Saw a lot of small set of fries, which I don't mind because the fries are delicious. And I had to order like small fries. What? But up, up, up! You're loving it, right? No, but up, 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 but it makes your kids fat. That's what it does. I mean, you're not wrong. And there, and I'm in there, and then I'm not opening my packs until I get home. So I just go to the get. So after I ate like a fat ass and throwing that shit wherever the fuck it is, and probably having my stomach feeling with. Like that problem with digestive, whatever, you know, like crab and all that chicken nuggets and stuff. Just go in there, nuggets. just go in there with my Sprite, looking whatever, because they don't have the cards, they don't have anything, maybe I buy a couple shirts, whatever. I just got what I got, and then after that, I just walked all the way home, and then, and then I just opened the packs, went, went home feeling <laughs> disgraceful for myself, because it was just for fun, it was just for uh, re yeah, recordings and stuff, just to send to a, like a Facebook group. You know, just for fun. Um, but I'll tell you this, guys. It was not. It's not really worth it. Yeah, it's cool to get all these little cards and stuff. But honestly, it's not a big fucking deal. Of course, like Gio said, if you got the Pikachu or the holographic Pikachu, which is worth what's just worth more. Yeah, congratulations. In good condition, you'll make a lot of money in the future. But in reality, guys, it's not even fucking worth it. It's just a bunch of pack of starters. It's not like you're gonna get a Charizard. From, it's not like you're gonna get oh, yeah. a base Charizard reprint mint condition hollow and you take it to be either the PSA or Beckett and you go get it try to get a 10 and you'd be worth a thousand dollars it's not gonna be that kind of a big deal it's just for fun it's for collection they only yeah. expect it like kids maybe a couple of you growing ups you know they make a profit yeah they make a profit again that's great I mean you made a killing off of this especially the people attacking the cinnamon toast crunch to get the cards in there you know people were like attacking the pub to send some I'm at FIU across the street, there's a Publix. People are buying out all the cereal boxes, selling that out just to get the cards. And trust me guys, it's not really worth it. I mean, you're just doing this to make a profit. You don't even, you make more money when the when you're just having the packs unopened anyway, because like I said, if you, get, if you have unopened packs, it, it, it's it, worth it a lot of money. I think the skill, because you gotta sell on eBay, um a lots of times because you're gonna make more money on sealed there than you are tcg player it's a lot of stuff that people don't realize like you kind of have to know what you're doing exactly you know, to me exactly and all this is not really worth it you know and so it's killing cereal to kill mcdonald's obviously they're not selling the toys they're not selling that stuff anymore because i already passed away which is good for them because they don't have to deal with that venue crap 
So I think for them though, they, they don't have to make them. They don't, they're losing, they don't get that much money like they were expected. But you know, then again, it, it's kind of safer than to be sorry. Um, it, it's funny because Pokemon overshadowing set thirteen Dragon Ball release day. You know, see, you know, Pokemon does that on all the TCGs, probably except Yu-Gi-Oh, right? It's like you throw a Pikachu, you throw a Charizard, everybody's like, yeah, you know. You throw Goku, they're like, eh. And God knows we have so many Gokus in this game. Because we have so much Gokus, it's not even funny. And the, unless you're gaining the UI Goku, who cares? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the Invoker Goku as well. That too, but either way, like, if you don't get the highest quality cards, it wouldn't matter. You could have a thousand Gokus and nobody would care. In fact, people are even sick of Goku. They're tired of Goku, man. They're sick. I mean, until they pr print Brawly into the ground. Don't worry, that's coming. Yeah, because Brawly's more fan favorite than Goku. People were done with Goku. Like, Goku was fun for me in Dragon Ball. Like, he was okay in Dragon Ball Z and I liked that stuff. But they, it just started dying and dying. The character just looks like a joke and he's becoming more of a pain in the ass character that Toriyama sticks down her throat like like Vince McMahon did with Hulk Hogan, you know? Was that oh, I thought, you were gonna, I thought you were going to say like Vince McMahon does with Roman Reigns. Acknowledge me. No, Goku, Roman Reigns is not like Goku level. Like Hulk Hogan was like driven down our fucking throats so yeah, much yeah, yeah. in the late 80s and early 90s. That was a bad thing, and then they did the same thing in WCW in the mid '90s, and that was big. Yeah, he did like the turnaround with Hollywood Hogan, but then again, they still drive the motherfucking asshole in your damn throats, and I'm sick of that shit. It was. Hey, hey, when are we gonna get Hollywood John Cena? Hey, man. Hey. I don't know, man. Could I don't know. I'm done with John Cena. He sucks. Anyway, so, but going into these promos, getting the launch promo, getting brainwashing no more and Matt Saiyan. Getting the Vegeta Prideful Transformation body uh, counter. The not even a scratch, which that left me scratching my head. And the Sun Goku and Hit Supreme Alliance. It's a really good reprint set on today that they are. The set 13 release day, it's a fantastic set. I opened two cases with, with David on Wednesday. That was fun of this. Well, I mean, not opening all those packs, but you know, seeing the set and seeing the beautiful cards. Bit surprising seeing the launch promo here reprinted so soon. That's probably like the one that caught my eye. I'm like, oh wow. But it, it's fantastic stuff for the game. And I think all TCGs, you know, I mean, to do these sorts of things so their players can get access to these cards and play these cards and play these decks. There's no reason a deck should cost you, I think, like 150 to 300. Yeah, that's manageable, but some people don't even go that far, and that's fine. But no deck should cost you like six, seven, eight hundred dollars. You know, especially like if it just like gets, you know, oh look, new set, new deck, which they haven't done that in a while. But still, this is a fantastic set. So, if you want my opinions, uh, we're gonna go with King Vegeta and Meki Gabora. The decks you want to pick up right now, and Mechi Core is kind of cheap because it's a lot of rares. King Vegeta is kind of expensive. You got three promos, but hey, Bandai being Bandai. But those are the those are the decks I would target if I was somebody playing competitively, just looking at the set 13 landscape and playing what deck is going to be good. Those are the ones we're going to go with today on set 13 release day. I mean, what do you think, Kevin? Uh, best. Uh, this is actually like literally the best uh, events packs I've seen in a while. Again, it's a shame I'm not playing the game anymore because they could have done this. Instead, they just focus on they, other crap. They could have done this a while ago. Let's be real. They, they, like, they, we they, love Bandai, but they, they could have done this a while ago. The problem with that is it's like they don't really li like. They say they listen to us and they do little by little, but at the same time, they don't really focus so much. They. I think it's like they try to fight off with Konami. It's like with AEW today, with their booking, they try to make them do better. They made a promise that they were gonna be focusing a lot with the wrestling styles and basically gave out- They wanted to be different. Yeah, be That's different right. everything. But instead they're recreating everything that WWE and WCW and TNA did. And they're terrible with the booking, especially when you got like the guy, the, cre the owner of the company, Tony Khan, putting all of this in his head and 
I'm hearing now he's doing it with tweets of all these god awful uh, booking ideas that he doesn't even bother telling the wrestlers who have to do that stuff for the booking. Uh, but with Bandai, it's like, yeah, they get, we they listen to us, but they don't really listen to us. You get me? It's like it's like they're getting their surveys. It's like God knows they have a lot of surveys, and they got a lot of like, hey, look, this is uh, you want to choose something? Here you go. And that's fine, but like sometimes it feels like we fill these things out months in advance, and then by the time we get the card, it may not it may not even it might have, well some of them have been paragraphs. These are fine. These are actually like, oh look, all these cards are still kind of relevant and still kind of good. Maybe the the Frieza uh, healing pod might be the only niche one out of all of them, but like they're still valid, right? It's not like before, like, hey, look, we got this card, like, you know, we got an objection, alt art, like, and, it, and then it got banned, or you know, uh, we got King Vegeta alt art. Hey, look, you got a rod into the ground. It's not no longer good. So like. This is a very good step. I mean, I voted for like the the brainwash no more, the Bardock against fates. Like I've been, I voted for some of these. I voted for dormant, so people can have their say. You know, I'm voting for violent rays. I'm voting for all the black promos. I'm voting for the the <clears throat> iconic wares from set nine, the Majin Buu, the Cell, the Vegeta, the Goku. I'm voting for staples that the the people need, the people want. You know, I'm sure you can agree with me on that, Kevin. Eh. Eh. Just, well. I'm just going, eh. Eh. I, I, I see the enthusiasm. I mean, you know. I mean, watch them make a bonkers Frieza deck and like, okay, I'm back. For like two seconds. Exactly. But. So, this makes a... You know, I think Set 13 would be good for the game. There's nothing overpowered. And, um... That will be... Um, I'm excited to play, you know, Blue Gohan, Supreme Kai, uh, some of these decks. <clears throat> you know, Mechie, King Vegeta, Bardock. Stuff like that. So I'm very excited to see where this works. Um, but, speaking of sets... Yes, right. You know, with... So the next thing we do have to... Wait, you ready to talk about more sets or get to the next point? Um. Hmm. Well, I think it was a good segue to talk about the Pokemon one. Yeah. So we well, let's hear this. So we got is Pokemon reprints uh, be enough to be sold at the GameStop stores instead of Target? Now that Target okay. is no longer That's doing their sales stuff. last since last week. Well, I mean, GameStop should. I mean, because every time I went to the GameStop stores, they did have a huge ton of the Pokemon collections, the big boxes, they have like specialty cards, they have all uh, these uh, special elite boxes and everything, but it's very difficult now. I mean, you have to do pre-orders, and then when I spoke to to the cashier to the game at the GameStop store, he tells me that it's really difficult to give out the cars because then if you pre-order it now but the cars aren't here yet or there's something with the delivery that's having trouble, they have to go call the person on the phone and they have to basically swallow the pride, have to literally apologize on the phone and literally sound sincere because they know they're going to end up having a, a, a rude customer or a customer being literally aggravated and going to be causing a lot of mischief because they're not getting their cards. They wouldn't mind giving your money back, of course, but then you'll be sound disappointed. And it's really tough out there. It's because right because they're more focused on dealing with the video game stuff and the the just the Pokemon training card players are just out there just causing a lot of mischief. All because they're not getting their cards and they're they're desperate because they want to go and get it somewhere else. And with both Walmart and Target no longer selling the cards until the scalper situation is completely um, gone. There's nothing else they can do, and it's very difficult. And the only resource you get card shops is either online or the actual card shops, which they charge a lot more. And sure, Amazon, which could have like uh, so many cards, because I, I really wouldn't trust eBay most of the time, especially when they go higher in the prices, because they like to fuck around there. Um, I like to like stay away from eBay. Uh, let's look at a little bit more of Amazon, because 
with Amazon, it does show the cards, but they like to go and pick up the price a bit more because they know that the, if the cards have been sold out in Target, they're going to be selling out a lot more on Amazon, and they like to get that chance. But then again, you know, it's not as worse. It's just not enjoyable for the players to just go out and choose whatever packs or sets that they can pick up. So Well, this, this is true, you know, because, like, are they going to make enough of these sets now that Target is saying no? Um, I had to get a phone call moment. That's why I don't know what if, what you were saying, but like, like are they gonna make enough of like you know like Vivid Voltage, Shining Fates? Are they even gonna attempt reprinting Hidden Fates? You know, like, is it gonna be enough that you know Target's not gonna be a reliable source of uh, getting stuff? And for a while, these people are just like not gonna have access to it, and they have to go to their local game shop. Which distributors are upcharging on Pokemon product because they know it's hot right now. They know it's a, it's something that people want to buy. And will people want to buy boxes if they get a distributor charges the game shop more? Then they got to charge the customer more. You get me? Yeah, pretty much. Will yeah. this reprint be enough to satisfy the player base, satisfy us? You know, help us with, uh, you know, with what we're doing exactly so it's pretty much uh unfair to see how everything has to be all casual all because people got their stimulus checks and they want to go out and buy out the cards it's pretty pretty bad uh so but i don't know what else to do i highly doubt they're gonna get some of those cards because even gamestop is already backed up to get the cards and they can only give those cards out to pre-orders because so they gotta also deal with this they also, but right now their major priority isn't about cards their major priority is to make sure they get the sales for most games coming out especially a lot of people who are more focused on trying to get the ps5 and the xbox one uh new stock coming out that should be coming out later this christmas that's it. There's nothing else they can do. Yeah, pretty much. So, and we do talk a lot more with DBS and Pokemon, but what is the fate with Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, I hardly see Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, because I want to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit right now. So, Yu-Gi-Oh, right now, when you go to GameStop, you're just basically seeing some lame structure deck sets that you're only, you can probably have a shit ton in your house. You get so many copies and it's just too much but it's not even worth it because you're not getting the special packs you need to get so you can go and buy the resources with Yu-Gi-Oh being hit with this situation it's not even being fair to the Yu-Gi-Oh community players despite you know I'm not a fan of what's going on with Yu-Gi-Oh because I'm not a fan of their current formats nor am I a fan with Konami's crazy BS situation with their rulings and their ban list being unfair and unpredictable so everything is like a real mess a real clusterfuck with that game and i mean you know like having one because i keep up with that to have the game i keep up with all the games and all the metas but like watching that meta be dragon link is best deck in formats kind of boring not gonna lie yeah i'd rather just go back in time play an old school format hell i wouldn't mind playing some old school decks and I don't mind that because it's just enjoyable. It's just fun. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind going back to Zodiac format, ABC format, Dino format. These were not that long ago, and I feel like they're better than today's format. And that's why you have no friends. Hey, man. Hey, hey. It's not my fault I played Dinosaur and ABC, okay? It's not my fault. It, it, well, it, uh, it, you, you have no one to blame but yourself. Uh, I have friends. Your dex doesn't count. Oof. Well, you know, we have more people than that, so. You know, but. Like I said, but, like I said, Raphael, you cannot use the Guardians to peacefully be your friends, even though you prevent them to coming out of the graveyard. Even, I'm, I'm Leonardo, you know. No, uh, I, well, I meant Raphael from Season 4 of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. So, our next one we're going to be talking about is uh, that which game would any player out there like to try out that's new? Or any person out there that likes to try out any other game for the first time? 
Uh, so in experience, it's really hard to see players on today's standards pretty much different than we were back in, let's say, about when the Yu-Gi-Oh! series came, or when the Pokemon card game set came out. But I'm going to say Yu-Gi-Oh! because let me explain why. Yu-Gi-Oh! was the anime based on the card games. So when you're watching that show, you're basically hyping yourself with a bunch of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. And that takes your the idea of like... You sell Yu-Gi-Oh cards, you make a profit. If there's tournaments, they make a profit. And when the big tournaments come out, not only you're making a profit, but you're helping building a base of players who want to go out and try hard to play the card game that takes us seriously, that goes out, spends their money on, on meta decks and certain cards that you need to for your decks to build. And it takes things to the next level. And then we, of course, there's the Pokemon cards that did came out like early 2000s, 2001. Uh, if you're just more into the Pokemon, never got into the Yu-Gi-Oh set, uh, but which is fine. Uh, the collectibles was one thing because not many people did play the card game, and it did got and some people who enjoy the card game for tournaments and stuff. Well, I mean that's good for them. They got to enjoy the game for a while. It's come, but it did get a more advanced later on over the years. So completely different than how it is today. Though it's not like you're seeing as bigger when you oh, look more days that you can see this, this card game being played in a lot of tournaments. Because I only see this card game being played like once a week. It's not like with Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh do it because they get more fan base and they get more player base to go out and enjoy the meta games and try hard more. Uh, same thing with Vanguard, it's like once a week, GBS gets once a week, like later, yeah, yeah, two times, but now they're going back to one, thanks to Digimon, and Digimon's building with just one for now, but they might grow two, just in case DBS ain't doing well, uh, so on and so forth, of course, imagine you get like, every, like about two to three times a week, but it's like an everyday source, so either way, they don't, it's non-stop for the Magic base players. Uh, but if you were to start, um, you best want to start in a card game that you either think is enjoyable as fun, that you don't want to spend too much money on, or something that's more easy to understand. And if you're willing to go and make a spending profit on, and then that, and don't mind me, that's on you, because you can do whatever you want as long as you have a, a certain budget. And you can pick up the, the cards little by little, even with your paychecks, financial aid, your bonuses, uh, store credit, anything. I mean, whatever you want. Um, I'll give you three. Uh, one is definitely Yu-Gi-Oh. As much as Yu-Gi-Oh is the most expensive game, it's very difficult to to analyze. If you start things off with a budget deck and everything, you can start little by little. If you have some friends that you want to meet up that can help you and is part pro or anything, they'll give you a decision say, yeah, I can get this card, best to get it. Yeah, buy maybe a couple, one or two booster boxes because you have a higher chance of getting some of the copies of the cards and then you can save up more for the next format or like the next um, booster box set that does contain more of the cards that you need for the game. Uh, I wouldn't put that in the highest tier because I, I know you, like I said, Yu-Gi-Oh! is not much of a big game here in Florida or, uh, and, or I don't know how it is out there, so, but I wouldn't say big, big, big like it used to be. Second, uh, we'll probably have to go is DBS, like, per se. Because you can play structured decks, you could buy the expansion decks because they already are treated like more as like a close to a meta deck. You just gotta buy some of the promo cards, which are the if I have to say, the promos and the secrets are the only ones that are very expensive to build. If you want to build it without it, I mean that's up to you. It's not gonna be a big meta deck. It'd be lack of on the, on the main resources cards you need, but. It's better than nothing unless you don't really require the secret rares, which is fine because not most decks do need the secret rares. However, you do are required to get the promos because the reason they mill these promos is that you put it in the type of deck you're playing and that way you can have the advantage to defeat your opponent. If you don't play the promos, you're only having a 50-50 chance of winning, which if you could end up in a mirror match, it could be bad for you because your opponent will probably have all the cards he needs to go and win the big tournaments and everything. But DBS also has their budgets. They're not, they've not been expensive, but they've been getting more expensive since set 10s came, came about. So 
it's it's really difficult to see a lot of new players coming in at the timing when everything is just going high on the rise of prices of the cards but that doesn't mean for the fact that you should give up on not trying out the game it's really good first player base to try out you know and it's a little bit like magic with all the tappings if you're like interested or if you want to change it up from magic to that game you know and it does have some of that Yu-Gi-Oh freshness it does have some of that sincerity like the DBS community isn't really bad like I said it's not as worse with the Yu-Gi-Oh community because it is more trolly there uh, DBS is a lot of fun I would highly recommend probably best not to get near some players that can be frustrating to deal with or the players you do meet that you think they're famous or you think it's great to have to enjoy with is sometimes not really the type of person you expect to be or their life started changing depending on like where they're from like if you get guys from the pbg for example sometimes they've been they started out pretty cool sometimes they'll change around their attitudes and their emotions and you're probably just not gonna feel happy and you're not gonna be like, understand the plan that when you get to talk to them and everything they're just not going to be like the happy-go-lucky guys you know maybe like peter katani like he's sort of different lately he's not really showing like the enthusiasm he used to have and it looks like he's just i don't know it just looks like he just doesn't give a shit anymore like the opposite how i met marcel and i thought i never i was more like interested with katani than marcel but then when i got to meet them katani just looks like the kind of guy he just doesn't seem happy and when you say, hey, how you doing? He just he just gives you like an ignore look when you're just saying hi to him. You just go to Marcel, you just talk to him for a bit. You just give him a little conversation. He'll listen to you. He'll just yell, he's pretty cool than you think. You know, and he's actually one of those kind of guys. He usually does what's up to me. Ironically. I don't know. Oh. I, I'm lucky, I guess. I've seen, I've seen that, though. Where he doesn't say much. But, you know, it can depend on, you know, how he's feeling that day, you know. If a romantic relationship not going well, there's a lot of factors. I mean, I wouldn't say Katani's a dick. I'm not saying he's a dick. Sometimes, just sometimes, he might have an attitude, but I'm not saying he's a dick. If he's a, but unless he was very rude to me and everything, I'll just say, well, this kind of guy I wouldn't probably want to have a conversation with, and I'll just stay away from him, and I just want him to stay away from me. But you know, then again, Marcel's just being nice. He's just doing his job, and maybe he might not listen to me. You never know. You never you you can't judge a book by its cover. But Mar- Marcel's the homie. He's such a good guy. Good, yeah. I you know. I could tell that Marcel's not the kind of guy who'll just like say fuck off or anything, even if he's on his job. He would. He will take the time to listen because maybe he might need a little break having a conversation with someone. I mean, Peter, Peter's the homie too, but you know, you could tell he's a little seductive on who he reacts with. So. I mean, that's fine. Sometimes we're like that, you know? I don't have to talk to most people. Sometimes I just don't want to talk to this person because I, I just may have... I have a funny story, though. Uh, with right. Peter. Okay, let's go ahead. So, me and the world playing a tournament. I forget if it was DBS or Digimon. Um, one of us has to go to the bathroom. We're going. And, um... I forgot... He, 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 um, I'm washing my hands. He's using, uh, the restroom. And I forgot he said something about Peter or something like that. <clears throat> he's like, what? You just talking about me? And he was in the stall that he, we couldn't see him. He was in the stall next over. And the wall was shitting bricks. Because, oh, yeah. He was like saying, oh, he doesn't like me or whatever. It's not that I don't like you. I'm just working. And he felt so embarrassed when that happened because we didn't even know he was there because we didn't we're not looking down and seeing if there's feet in the stalls you know so he felt so embarrassed (laughs) and stuff like that and and that's a very good lesson to never say what's on your mind sometimes when you're in public it's better to do it in private even if you're in a bathroom there's a small chance person you're talking about is using the stall too and he might come so, up, put his hand on that top of the stall, and looks at you while you're taking that shit, and he says, Why you gotta be so mean, and you're just looking so nervous that you might take the biggest crap of your life, and you regret everything you said. That's Noel Villamonte, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen. Oof, oof. So I guess, uh, did that finish your list? Did you go one, two, three? Oh, did I go to one, two, three? I don't know. We, we said my top three, but I never finished number one. But, oof, oof. I mean, if you want to go play this by ear, I would love to see Pokemon, 
But I have to be truthful to the community about it. It's not that great of a start, unless you're like, you're, wait, it's a great community. It's good to have a beginner's luck, but it takes a while to understand the card game a bit, and you have to spend a lot of money because the card game itself is very expensive. Now, it's not expensive to get ultra rares and a couple copies of cards. I mean, that's okay because lately they don't really care. They just they just give out a lot of special trades, which is great. I mean, if you want to, I'll put this in a tie though for number one because again, the Pokemon community is fantastic they will take the time to teach you they're not dicks they're not like any other card shops they will be on the ball i respect them a lot they have a cool junior division which i like because i think i, I kind of wish there was junior division sometimes like kids are allowed to play major tournaments but i like them to have their own division you know where they can like fight with other kids and see who's the best one so they can work their way to face top tier players and they can even learn from top tier players or, or coaches or anything uh is sometimes that like, people want to make the actual deck it does cost a little bit more than you anticipated it does cost a lot more money if the card you're required to get does go like over the like for me the budget like around twenty dollars because i like to go twenty dollars per card but i don't like to go beyond like around forty to fifty dollars because that could be very expensive uh but <clears throat> i know i know how you feel koitsukai killed me when i paid like 70 per you're not wrong I don't know that one. And thus, I'll just say probably it's Vanguard because Vanguard, uh, though their community, I wouldn't say is the best. I wouldn't because I'm just not really interested in the Vanguard world. I mean, it's fun for a while. It's okay. Uh, they have they're not that expensive. They're but they're pretty good budget. They their game does look confusing though. I mean, I'll give this like a 1.5 run. I, I do want to tie with Pokemon. But I would have to say that their card game does look a bit confusing because the where the wordings on the text, the symbols, and their power is highly confusing. What the fuck was that? Riding the Vanguard, bro. Come on, gotta get high. It was like so loud in my ear. Ow. Yeah. No. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I did learn from the enemy. And then I learn from other players too sometimes because I do have to ask a couple questions. But you know, little by little, you get the hang of it. The deck, the type of deck you'll learn. Uh, like I said, their community is not that bad because they're not really big, but they're not that bad. They're not as worse. Uh, pretty good, pretty deficiency. Um, most of the time, I think it's the card shops that kind of fuck around with the card game more. But you know, either way, it, it's okay. They have, of, they have a lot of weight, yeah. You know, if they can't pick a product, they're not inclined, and then they usually stick to the big three magic, Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh, which that kind of gets annoying. And then people wonder, oh, how come new card games don't uh, survive or come up? Well, you don't support it. That, and sometimes their, their rulings can be pretty problematic too. So it pretty much can be the effect, the cause and effect, or the meta decks and car taxes can also be the, the problem. That's just why it's really hard for players to be staying or sticking around with that certain type of card game or format. But mm -hmm. if my perspective, uh, honestly, I would go basically number one Pokemon, 1.5 Vanguard if you're really interested to take it the literal, I meaning have fun with that. Uh, number two, DBS, and number three, Yu-Gi-Oh, because I say that's the best start. You can choose to do Magic the Gathering, but I must warn you, Magic is very complex, and, and sometimes it has a situation to where it could get a little bit too serious, because Magic players really take this card game a lot serious as Dungeons and Dragons players, because it's all the I mean, the methodological. That's really that's where the game comes from apparently they got they when they were bored of dnd &D, they would go and play with decks of uh of magic um, you know in their spare time so i can see that and that's what causes a lot of issues so therefore it's not really i wouldn't say you wouldn't stop doing you're doing it i mean we have all the magic cards in the world guys you can start getting that but I really wouldn't think it'd be a good idea as a new player to try out card games to be focused on magic unless you're willing to be 100% focused with magic. Because a lot of people could try commander. That's fun. Uh, but I often suggest commander or draft in that game. 
but that's pretty much it and sometimes their drops could be a bit more expensive too magic is very expensive yeah, yeah it's, it's literally the most expensive card game in the entire world even though they're not selling profit they're still number one because they've been having the communities all around for a long ass time and they do what it takes to make sure they stick with it no matter how bad it gets more than Yu-Gi-Oh, more than Pokemon, more than Dragon Ball, more than Vanguard, more than any other card game even beforehand that's discontinued. This game, this card game is the only thing that still keeps going on. And if Magic the Gathering does disappear, then they probably have never reached their limits and there's nothing else they can do about it. But they're still going on strong. Well, I guess it's time for uh, my top three. And, uh, I think... I think we might surprise you on this one. Go ahead. So, coming at number three, we got Card Fight Vanguard Overdress. And this game has a lot of hype right now. It is probably the cheapest game you can get into, getting a trial deck for $5 and completing decks for $50, $60, I hear. It's pretty neat. You know, they're getting a reboot. You know, there's an anime, so like, there's things to get you into the anime more. And, uh, yeah, I picked up a trial deck myself trying it out, and, um, I think that's a very good price point. When you can have a very easy entry to your game, you're going to be successful. Unless your game is bad, or has bad rulings, or is a very bad meta. But, it's very important that we let the, the players try to get in, and, uh, and Card Fight Vanguard's been very popular at BBG. Which, to my surprise, like, you know, because normal Vanguard was just whatever, but Overdress been flying off the shelves. Even cool stuff selling. Cool stuff in, my, uh, in general, but, you know, our cool stuff Miami selling $15 trial decks overcharging, and they're gone. So I think if you're a fan of small cards, a fan of card games with animes, or you're a card shark, You'll love Card Fight Vanguard Overdrives. Number two, we got Dragon Ball Super. So I think we're on the same page, right? Yeah, pretty but much. But I have a little... Huh? Yeah. So, we, we, we put little differences. I think that the Vegic, start, the Vegic starter deck has been the best starter deck they've ever printed. If they can make more decks last several formats, like they made that one last. Like, the Vegito deck was pretty good, but it, it kind of fell off, and, you know, like, it's more of a rogue deck at this point. And the Frieza fell off eventually, too. But those three, those three were very good, but Vegex has outlasted the other two. They need to make more like that. But, if you pick one color, you stick to it, and you buy all the staples, and you spend the globs of money, then DBS becomes an affordable game. Or... They have decent, you know, if you play aggro, which aggro is great, a lot of the uh, aggro decks are on the budget side of things for that game. <clears throat> you know, it's just different avenues, you know, with all these reprints coming, or, you know, the event packs, the champ packs, you know, reprinting set 10 and 11. It'll get people that really like this Dragon Ball IP a chance to come and try it out, you know. I'm always going to suggest if you're a new player, pick up two Vegex starter decks, you won't be disappointed. Or, you know, you know, um, if your shop does best of three, pick up the reboot leader, uh, Go Gohan leader, and uh, play in best of three with that, you know. Um, so there's some of the more affordable decks, and you, you know, uh, we'll give honorable mentions, you know, if you're playing best of one, Majin Vegeta. Um, Red Brawlies actually super affordable now, which is kind of strange. Um, King Piccolo, even if you can't afford the promos, the playable deck. Um, Dark Brawly. This new Mechie Kobora uh, Wish deck from the new set. Like there's, just as long as you can know what deck you you're trying to make, it can be affordable. But you have to have a plan. Because if you just copy a meta deck. Or a copy and net deck people, then you're just always going to spend globs of money. And it's never going to be worth it. And Bandai listens to the player community, which is great. 
But this leads me to my number one, and I and I figured you would have thought I would have said Dragon Ball Super at one, right? So, I think my answer might surprise you here for number one. But for number one, and I have suggested new people to this game, and they have bought them. The my for my number one is the Digimon TCG. That's not now you're gonna that's say, so obvious. I knew it was gonna pick Digimon. So well, I wasn't. We're not going Pokemon here. It's not going to. Yeah, I like Pokemon. Fun game, but <laughs> but um, the thing is, is that yes, buying sealed for this game is a mission and a half, and yes, buying sealed is like super duper expensive online. But if you buy singles for this game, it's super cheap. The green deck will cost you anywhere from fifty to like seventy dollars. Rookie Rush is like under twenty, hundred thirty. Like, the most expensive deck is Red Omni, and yeah, that's uber expensive, but it's not even that good of a deck right now at the time of this recording, and it's like anywhere from a seven to like $900 deck. But outside of that, well, I mean, unless you're playing Millennium Mon right now, outside of that, these decks are pretty affordable for what they are. You know, um, Imperial might cost you two to three hundred. Probably closer to 300, 320, but that's all reasonable. Cheaper than Dragon Ball prices, by far. Um, you know, they did have waves of starter decks to come out again, and uh, some people were able to find that. But you could find on uh, Facebook groups, you know, the open starter decks on sale, or you can find people selling whole decks or singles for what you're looking for. This just makes it so much cheaper. It's a very fun game to play, casually or competitively. It's, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty, it's pretty simple, straight to the point. The cards do exactly what they say. Same for Dragon Ball Super, but they've gotten a little bit Yu-Gi-Oh that you could play a lot of things for free and some people don't like that. There's summoning thickness in Digimon, which is great. But, you know, it's, I've noticed that even a lot of girls playing Digimon which is great. I didn't see that too much in Dragon Ball Super. And locally, we have uh, a couple that play Digimon together. I don't know if you knew this, Kevin. And it's really great to see, you know? And besides that one girl, there were two other girls that played in a couple of tournaments, actually. Which is refreshing to see. So, you know, I think Digimon being more iconic than people realize is dragging their fan base into this card game and making it what it is. It's a very nice community. I mean, I for me, Digimon, Dragon Ball, and Pokemon are probably the top communities in my eyes. Yu-Gi-Oh! can never be top for, I mean, if they weren't so toxic all the time, but still. You know, and you, you know, it's, it's a growing game. People, you know, it has that problem, right? That people's like, oh, this game's gonna die and this and that. DBS heard a lot of those things, never died, and it's still here. Kind of figured Digimon will take the same route. So what do you think about what I said? Having Digimon 1, Dragon Ball Super 2, and Card Fight Vanguard number 3. Toilet flush. To toilet flush? Toilet flush. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. 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 So, <laughs> yeah, but that's fine though. But Digimon could do something for new, and I think that's a great idea to have a starting. Um, but yeah, so if we could agree, uh, I guess Digimon, Vanguard, Pokemon, and DBS would be the best choice. Uh, obviously, Yu Gi Oh! and Magic would not be the best choices because they're too expensive and their community is not that great. Some, so, I highly suggest pick I ones that have you better prefer something that's simple good to buy hoping it's worth saving money have a great community and you're pretty much all in set nothing wrong with that all in that guys it's great to, for a starting point for new players and great for other players who got interested by hearing from their friends or checking them out themselves um yeah that's pretty great so now let's go to the finale of the part for the podcast and that's going to be the pro play games and golden phoenix gaming are doing a special card fight vanguard and digimon tournament this weekend 
Geo. Yes. What is yes. the scoop on those tournaments? Well, ironically, they're both hosting Card Fight Vanguard and Digimon tournaments on the same day. One in Miami, one in Kissimmee for, you know, each day. And um, we're just, you know, since we're always throwing out, you know, for pro play games, we love Machado here, you know, great guy, does everything we can. But, you know, we're also shouting out the Golden Phoenix uh, games store as well. Um, ironically, one of the uh, owners or one of like the bigger people I went to junior high with, actually. Really? Yeah, on that store. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. So they're doing they're doing events in Orlando. They're going to be streamed on Twitch as well. So we're just throwing that out there for the people that listen to our you know listen to us you know that we're always talking about events and our, trying to get our the beloved 13 viewers we love you uh, well you know you know sometimes you know 20 you know but you know we love everybody that listens to us and it's great you know it'd be great you know if you guys can always leave comments for us and we love answering comments in the videos we're giving you an op we're giving you an option to literally leave a comment folks come on come on well, see, I was browsing through your YouTube. Do you know the video with the highest views on your channel? The, from the podcast or from my actual channel? In, just general. Just in general. Yeah, Out the, of everything. Yeah, the Gen X version 3 deck profile I made a few years back. Wow. wow. I, I, I was like, dang, he's not going to get this. But you did. Of course. I, you don't think I know my own damn YouTube channel for so many years? I literally check out which has the highest views. And of course, a lot of people chose the Gen X one because Gen X was just a deck of a bunch of cards that actually have attributes and certain abilities that you can probably play in other card decks. You got Neutron for, for uh, uh, what was that? Kagemuri. What was that machine deck for Synchros? I forgot. Kagemusha, I don't know. That's, that's fucking sexy. Kind of crazy. Kage Curries, yes. So you have Neutron for Kage Curries. You have Undyne Controller for Mermails. You had um, all the rest <laughs> to basically be main for your deck. But, 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 but what I liked about it was it was a fun deck. It was creative. A lot of people never saw a lot of deck profiles on it. And I like to put a lot more effort to it because I love the deck. I didn't really care. I love how much work I, I spend the money on. I love how much I creative I can be. It was like so much fun. And I thought because I got better and better over the years with Yu-Gi-Oh! And I saw a couple fun videos for some people who had tech cards in it. I thought, hey, why don't I do that idea? Let's see how that works. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it didn't. And I just put all, perform and did a great job working hard on providing a good amount of tech ideas, come up with even good ideas that, yeah, it sounds strange at first, but when I test it on my own, because I wouldn't obviously do a deck profile and just, yeah, I'm in a deck profile, so this is what you do. You play this card, then blah, 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 and this, and move on and call it a day. No, I had to go out, explain my reasons, even though they're not 100% clear, but I explained the best way I can show in the video to all my viewers and to anyone who watches the video to understand why I play these certain cards, what strategic movements that I thought I could use with war, and of course some of them are not complete because of my budget wasn't exactly as perfect, but it still doesn't mean for the fact that you can go out there and just create yourself. Hell, if Gen X has actually made a structure deck, yeah, why not? Why not just go ahead and try them out because they made a bunch of element magician spellcasters out there for a structure deck. They made Ice Barriers, one of the worst decks from the Hidden Arsenal set, to actually have a structure deck. So they're bringing out all the works on that. So, hey, why not give us the Gen X links you, you, you people do like you do with the other decks that no one cares. Even though I'm not a fan of links, I want to see. Where's my Pendulum Gen Xs? Where's my XC Gen Xs? Where's my Fusion Gen Xs? Where's my Ritual Gen Xs? Where's all the love for Gen Xs? Well, why not? You give the chance. Uh, you it, it all went to Machina's for a thousand. That's not my problem. And I did main a Machina Gen X deck because I enjoy making that. That was just creative of the mind. And I put all my hard work effort.
Hell, you have my boy, the Gen X Ally Berman, still at one to this day. I think he should be released at three because if you're allowed to have Liminal Remover at three, Pot of Average three, Monster Reborn back out of the ban list, come on, you should have the balls to actually get my boy Berman back to the game. It's not the end of the world, people. Nope, it is not. It's it's not. But I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it's not Dragon Link or some of these degenerate decks. You know, I'd be okay with this. These useless wannabe decks that think they're meta, but in reality, you're just useless. <laughs> I mean, you know, Virtual World, Salomon Great, Dinosaur, uh, what's this other one? Man, I'm forgetting. It's such a trap deck. You know, oh man, oh well. It's gonna hit me after we finish this recording. I'm gonna be like, "Wow, I should have said that." But, yeah. You pretty much so, do anyway. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So, you know, I it's great because like, the TCGs are all about fun and just. Man, I remember when I was a new player. I I started off with Pokemon. So. Actually, years back. So that was a fun time. Yeah. Hopefully hopefully we help some people choose the card game that they want to play. Meet or Duel Masters. And if we can actually bring Duel Masters back recreated, we don't have to make the anime because we know today's anime standards of how they do it, like they like just, even though four kids does not exist anymore, we got fucking Nickelodeon and Disney trying to do whatever that crap with anime because it's just awful. I would be happy if they can go ahead and make Duel Masters. If they can do us a favor and not make the... If you want to make the anime, at least give us a sub first so we don't have to listen to the god-awful dub. Yeah, it gets the dub um, actors money, which is fine for them, but that's not going to be enough for us because we don't care. But if you're going to make Duel Masters recreative and you're going to make it like Yu-Gi-Oh, don't make it too corny as fuck because it was horrible. And I've got to say this, Gio, I don't know a lot of people know this, but early 2000s anime style at the time is the most cancerous thing you can ever watch. It was awful. It looks really bad. Like, they actually use this in anime porn to this day because it's so fucking bad. It's terrible. I'm so glad we fixed it later on in the 2010s. We got better styles of the animation. I think it's the best quality we have ever seen. They just kept sticking it too much because I think they keep forcing the animation to go even too much nowadays. And most of the time, people are, are getting lazy with the artworks. They're getting lazy with the styles and the qualities of the story. And they're being repetitive with the same genres where it's, everything's fucking LARPing and everything. And I'm just getting bored of it. So, everything has a limit now. Mm, that's pretty well said. And uh, speaking of enemies, before we go, I do want to go ahead and pay tribute today's episode in the db sorry the tcg party podcast we are no longer the dbs podcast we changed that name remember that that we will also go ahead and pay tribute to the creator of berserker kentaro mira who sadly passed away may 6th and as of this result we hope to say we thank the man uh, who basically portrayed it, the series since 1989. It was continuing on still to this day, but unfortunately, as his untimely death, the ending is now in a huge controversial issue with a lot of the fans who are major berserkers. Some people have made memes and qualities, but most of them have paid tribute to the berserker genre. Though many people are not mostly fans of the remake, a lot of people should know that his hard work was mostly dedicated to the manga, with the manga and always with it. And however you guys see it with the manga or the anime is up to you. Uh, I may not be a personal fan of the series, never got into it, but we'll pay respect to it because it was one of the longest reigning series that continue on. So again, Katara Mira, we pay tribute to you. We thank you so much for all your dedicated work. May you rest in peace. 
Yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. Yep. And uh, with that further said, One Piece creator, don't fucking die. Because <laughs> Jesus Christ, 900 fucking episodes of the fucking series, and God knows how long the fucking chapters are. How long is that shit gonna last? And you still keep going in the motherfucking story where in the end when you find you don't have, you never wrote down what the ending was in case you died you fucking die one day the ending's incomplete all this hard work for shit for no reason whatsoever you just piss off your entire one piece fan base and those poor souls that, that they'll never have an ending and, and man i can't sit through all that and then have, have an ending that'd be terrible <laughs> they will be the worst thing ever. It's it's you don't have a can. It's like you leave the middle of your in the good plot of the episode. You finally get to the finale. It's like the scene in Toy Story two, and Woody's like happy. He's ecstatic. He goes out. He's like, oh come on, the next episode. And they go, that's it. That's the last episode. What? Why? Two words. Spot Nick, which is technically one. Who cares? When the spaceships went up, people want to play with space toys. So when One Piece was going up, the creator died, it was High School of the Dead all over again. I mean, you can't get a worse ending than any Uh Yeah, actually, yeah, I can because I've watched a lot of bad, I watched a lot of good enemies that ended, bad, that ended badly, never continued, never finished. Wait, wait, so there's a Game of Thrones, but in animes? That was... No, you know, not, not both. Game of well, I don't give a shit about Game of Thrones. I thought that's terrible. <laughs> uh, everybody loved that show all of a sudden. Worst ending ever. Da 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 da. You got fucked now because your show got shit on. It was the worst season ever. You all got fucked. Da 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 da. We're gonna do that in the comment section. It is gonna be one comment to this video. If, if, I mean, I mean, I'm not surprised if this gives me the comments. I guess so. Okay. Oh, this guy, he's just like Game of Thrones. I, he talks shit and everything. Oh. The the best thing that Game of Thrones fans they need to realize: Big Bang Theory ended a week later and had a fantastic ending, while your show kicked rocks. Just remember. Just remember. <laughs> Something with a wiener and a wiener, baba ween, stuffy wieners, messy wieners. I'm, I'm surprised that, you know, like the CW kills their shows, but damn, HBO couldn't have killed that worse than CW kills their own shows. What, what does HBO do? They, they made Game of Thrones, but I'm um, saying like CW kills their shows horribly bad and HBO killed one of their like greatest shows with the worst ending ever. Not even CW could have watched it that bad. I mean, look at Smallville. Fantastic ending. A fantastic ending for a 15 year old yeah. show. You gotta go big, go uh, home. Supernatural. Oh. Hey, Supernatural. So uh, being oh. too here. Oh, I'll tell so. you. What, I'll tell you which one was the biggest disappointment ever. If you've watched all of, like the ninth, if you watch some of the mid '90s, early 2000s Spider-Man cartoons, they leave you in a major cliffhanger more than anything, and I got pissed off. You're not wrong. Like, You're not wrong. Like 1990, it, like spoilers. If you never see this, because it's really a great show. Don't get me wrong. I would watch that show, but that, but when I saw the ending, I was very mortifiedly pissed because I never properly knew that was the ending. The ending of the episode. I mean, at yeah. least the X Men cartoons had endings. Um. Oh yeah, you're like the 2006 X Men had like, had a season one, and it ended in a cliffhanger because it, it got canceled. It didn't get enough readings. It pisses me off. Um, and, and sometimes good things must come to an end. Brooklyn Nine Nine. I feel like there's also shows that never had good ending stories. They just force it too much, and they just keep going on, and it's like a shitty ending. Hey, but then we're left with like you know, 
crappy shows like, you know, Greg's Anatomy. It was great, but that's dragging on. What about South Park and The Simpsons? Uh, Simpsons is classic, and South Park, yeah, um, I, as much as I loved it back in the day, I'm surprised it's still around. I don't know, they killed everything with that last episode with the pet, with the vaccine episode, which I thought was stupid. Oh. They, they, I they, mean, you know, Family Guy is actually kind of like died quicker than South Park, though. You know, Family Guy just, just kills itself straight down our fucking deep throats, and they don't stop, and it's fucking annoying. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But you can leave in the comments section what favorite TV show do you have that just went to if you to... like if you like for us for to give us a review on that, we'll go ahead and talk about it. And if you guys are like all pissy and don't like my comments, I will be glad to talk to you. Give you guys a good shout out. No Wells Wilson 2 was gone. Da 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 da. Got my way to. I still love Noel. Alright, but I guess it's time we have to say goodbye once again. But we hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. It came up at our brains. Hint, hint. But. We had a great time, so I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you give us a huge shout out uh, to whatever. I don't know. Why am I giving us a huge shout out? I, 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 I... Oh, let's shout out Frank Castle. He's he lives in Miami now. You know, Mr. Vegeta Saint Army. So take him Can't out. Yeah. So today's shout out, we will give it to him because why not? He deserves it. Frank Castle, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen, the Frank Castle is the king of Vegeta of Saint Army. You think I'm the biggest Frieza Army guy? You got the Vegeta Saiyan Army. You can go ahead, look it up on Facebook, check out the Vegeta Saiyan Army Facebook group. He'll be glad to add to it as long as you are supportive to Vegeta and the Vegeta lineage and everything. He's very hyped, he works really hard. He's also officially now an official police officer. Uh, congratulations to him, even though this was weeks ago. He worked now on the duty, he's busting his ass, he's doing the best he can. You can also check out the Vegeta Saiyan Army YouTube channel, link will be in the description below. You can go ahead and check him out, check out his reviews on everything, updates, and all his great vlogs on all the cards because they are not only hilarious, they are very standard at point. So again, this is Frank Castle, the Vegeta Saiyan Army. Check him out. And I hope you guys take care. And so, I uh, do want to once again thank Giovanni here to being a part of our show. As always, we are so happy to be here, Kevin. And the well will get better. We hope to help. He might come back in the next time in the next episode when we got to take, talk about more crazy things. Again, well, wishing you well with the tooth fairy, the wisdom tooth. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, without that, guys, go ahead and give this video a like. Share this to your friends, subscribe if you're new, check out the Facebook page, I also edited that out, the TCG Party Podcast, that is the name, it might be stuck with the link, because I have, I got to fix that, I'm going to see if I can try it, it's still going to say facebook.com slash DBS podcast, but I will try to change it to the TCG Party Podcast, if not, well then you guys know where to find us anyway. But without further ado, guys, again, I will say adieu, au revoir. I'm going to fix it like I said last week because I did botch it. You all have a great time. Good night. Mwah. And good night. Bang. And I will see you all next week. This is Fortress Striker, signing off.